Oh, jeez. Caught me relaxing. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the fire pit. Now, we've done a lot of projects back here over the past couple of years, but there's one thing that's been kind of nagging me, and that's this ugly spot over here between the fire pit and the fence. Now, I can't really buy anything to fill that corner, so the rest of the fire pit's made out of patio stones. So we're gonna make a couple patio stones today because you can't buy anything that fits there. Now, I've shown how to do it before, but this method is arguably gonna be easier, less expensive, and probably quicker to do as well. So it's a simple method. If you got a random spot where you got an oblong shape, size, design, where you need a patio stone, this can be perfect for that. So let's get at it. Every good concrete project starts with a form. Now I'm just gonna use some regular pine one by threes. You could also use two by three depending on the size of the stone that you're making. But I may be showing one by two here. Don't do that. These are just because they're decorative and gonna be shoved in a corner just to fill a gap. They don't need to be very strong. Every other time though, I would always use a minimum of a one by three. And to assemble it, just put one inch and a half long deck screw in each corner. Just make sure you don't tighten them so tight you split the wood. Before we start, we're going to need a couple of tools you can find at the hardware store. A steel trowel, a wooden float, or a 2x4 larger than your form, and a concrete edging tool. With those in hand, grab a mixing bucket as well. This is a two bag one, and you can start mixing your concrete now. You're going to want to pour a bag in and mix one at a time, adding water as needed, and you're going to shoot for about pancake batter consistency. Now, it's going to be a heck of a workout, so get ready for that. Make sure to clean off and scrape all the sides and edges too, so you don't have any dry spots. Once the concrete's added to the form, just go ahead and either take your float or a two x four or even your trowel and push the concrete around into all of the corners, adding more as needed. You're gonna wanna fill it up to as close to level as you can, maybe just a little bit over and then work it back and forth into all the edges. And if you've got a high spot that doesn't wanna flatten out, just go ahead and kinda tamp your float or your two x four on there and it really helps it just sort of flatten out and self level. Now, if you've got a larger stone, you're gonna to wanna to grab a long straight two x four that's bigger than your mold and work your way across in a saw-like motion once you've got it filled up. Any concrete that you sort of accumulate on the leading edge, once you get to the other side, just go ahead and push it right over the edge. And if you've got a low spot back in the form, grab some of that concrete, throw it in the low spot and work your way back over it again in a saw-like motion until everything's nice and smooth. Now we gotta wait about a half hour before we hit it with our edging tools. So dispose of any leftover concrete in a ball until it's dry, then you can just throw it out. Now's a great time to clean your tools. All right, about a half hour later, it's firmed up just enough, we can put an edge on this guy. So using your edging tool, just sort of cut a line along your form and work your way down each pass a little bit further into the concrete until you're starting to smooth out the top layer. Just make sure that on your way back and forth with your pass, you're lifting the leading edge so you don't dig into the concrete and make a gouge out of it. With the edges all rounded over, then we can come back with our trowel and smooth out the face of it. Now you don't need to put a ton of pressure here, just enough to get it smooth. All right, how are we doing here? These are looking pretty good. All right, now it's been about three hours since I poured these. It's been about two and a half hours since I did the edging and they're firming up nicely. All the water's evaporated off the top. Now, I'm good with the curvature finish around all the edging and stuff on these. It's not perfect, but I'm not 
too worried about it because these are going to be stuffed in a corner. But if you wanted to really refine that shape, come out at about the hour and a half mark and run your edging tool around it and then retrowel the top of it. Be a nice hard trowel finish and that'd be a great way to leave it if you wanted. But I'm not too worried about the edges being 100% perfect on these. I just wanted the corners broken over so they weren't sharp and that's good enough for me. Now, an option I'm going to give them is using a stiff concrete brush like this. Just gonna give them a nice broomed finish and that should finish them off and give me a nice texture on here so it won't be so slippery. I may have waited too long. Depending on the temperature, this kind of a finish, you might have to hit it a little bit sooner. You want to pull nice, long, straight lines across there. And I definitely waited too long on these. It still has a bit of texture, just not as much as I was hoping for, but honestly, it's not terrible. If you want a bit more texture, do it a bit sooner. That's the hard part is kind of knowing when to do it. You want to just leave the slightest little imprint of your fingerprint, but not push into it. If you go too soon, you'll peel up the cream. If you go too late, you don't get as much texture as you want. So it's hard. And you can go whichever way you want on this. You could go this way, pull just straight lines across it, or you can go lengthways. It's entirely up to you. And now we'll just let these sit overnight and we'll come back to them tomorrow. Now one thing you'll notice with these forms is right after I demolded, they're all covered in concrete. Now most of this can be washed off, but if you plan on reusing these molds and making multiples of these slabs, you're going to want to oil them up. So just use some vegetable cooking spray and just spray the insides of the molds before we pour the concrete and that'll fix you right up for reusable molds. And that's it, simple as that, gaps filled. So I hope you guys learned something from the video. I hope you make some stones for yourself. If you do, whether it be oblong shape or even just a square, send me some pictures, whether it be Instagram or over an email, I'd love to share them with the community and show everybody what everybody's up to. So thanks so much for watching you guys. I'll see you in the next one.